I got 10 random sewing gadgets that Amazon flew with. Welcome to Keep For Yeet, where I test things so you don't have to. The first gadget is the Clover Seam Allowance Gauge Circle Plastic Thing. You have circular doohickeys with a groove in the middle where your pattern will go. You put the pen on the hole and it will slide, allowing you to mark the seam allowance as you wish. 10 millimeters. 7, 5 millimeters, and 3 millimeters. I think these two here are the ones that you're going to use the most for sewing garments. I don't know if I would be able to work with a 3 millimeter seam allowance. Maybe you quilters out there? Let me know. I don't know. <laughs> oh my god, it works. It's kind of weird when you're reaching the edge of the thing and sometimes it pushes the pattern away that you have a curve here, but it's not really a problem. Just complete there the line where you want it. And it's amazing. I love this so much. About these thingies here. I've also been using this a lot lately, especially the 7mm and the 10mm one that I lost already. But it is interesting if you're trying to mark a seam allowance really quick without having to calculate anything. This this is the way to go. It's a definite keep for me. Although I lost one already. When will I stop losing things? Will that ever happen? I don't think so. Will it? I don't know. I don't know. Next one is this clover presser, sing presser thing, whatever. Uh, it's a plastic thing. It is this very neat and fancy plastic roller that you use to press the seams flat on difficult fabrics. You're not really allowed to iron with a lot of heat. I think this is special for quilters, but I took over the quilting tools again. Let's do this. Hello, it's future me and I would like to tell you that this thing for me is a total keep. I've been using this so much. I didn't think I would find a use for this, but it's really, really good. I really like it. You press the seams and then they're easy to fixate with the iron. It's amazing. And for complicated fabrics, this is the most perfect thing ever. It helped me a lot on the kitty titty dress. Really, really helped me in the sisterhood of the traveling pattern dress because those are fabrics that I could not really press properly and this year, Mwah. I love it. I love it. The Fiskars circle cutter doohickey thing. Fabric circle cutter. Stoff Kreis Schneider. Cutter circulaire pour tissu. Fiskars. Perfect circles made simple. It cuts 11 different clean fabric circles. And the handle rotates, making cutting easier. This is not sponsored, by the way. I'm just reading what's on the back. Oh, what we have here is a ruler a guide with sticky feet and a roller cutter, a swivel roller cutter. These teeth here will attach themselves to the gauge lines and then you will go like this to cut your perfect circle. And when you press it, the thingy comes out to cut the fabric. It's the same size as my mini roller cutter. Fun that I will be able to exchange the blades if necessary. It's not something that will be so hard to find. This thing I think will solve a problem I didn't know I had. I mean, I always cut circles by hand and I never actually had a problem doing it. It's not something that I do that often. So could be that I have a problem doing it. And, and oh, it's really a perfect circle. Oh my God. Okay, 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 okay. I'm, I'm freaking out. I'm freaking the freak out. <sighs> <gasps> oh no! Here, do you see these? The blade was catching on the gauge. What the hell? Why is it not turning the way it should turn? Well, I destroyed the four centimeter one and I have no idea how or why. It already has a gauge for the seam. This is my circle skirt template. It has a radius of 11-ish. And let's cut an 11 circle. <laughs> oh my god! It's a perfect circle! I don't even think that my template is a perfect circle. Let's see. Eee. I can cut the waist part of the circle skirt. Imagine a bodice with a perfect circle on the back. Circle sizes include a quarter of an inch seam allowance. It's so weird. I like this. I 
really do, but will I use it? It works as intended. Aside from that hiccup, maybe this thing was not really engaged as it should be. Yeah, and using this without the gauge will be a little bit complicated because you cannot really where see where the blade is going. And I thought I would be able to swivel it back and forth, but that's that's not the case. So it's not even something that you can use on its own. I'm very confused and very torn. Is this a keep or a yeet? I think it is a yeet for me. I'm not a quilter. I don't need perfect circles like that. What I would use this for is really cutting the waistline of a circle skirt, but even so... This is why I have a problem with tools that are meant for only one purpose and one purpose only. You cannot use them for anything else other than cutting circles or drawing, drawing circles. Way too much money for that. Way too much money for I'll that. let you guys decide this one. What do you think? Would you keep this? Would you eat this? I think for me it's a yeet. But let me know in the comments what you say about it. Makes a funny noise. gadget is this amazing baby snap mini iron that is supposed to be tiny and portable. It has steaming capabilities, but let's see if it will help us flattening pesky seam allowance. Just look at it being cute here next to its big brother. It's so tiny, it's so cute. Smaller than my hand. Pretty hot. Ironing hot. I, I think I should not have gotten a black fabric to do this, but... Crumpled up fabric. What's the verdict then? I used this once and it's already full with weird water things. I this is the crumpled fabric I ironed with the mini iron. And this is the same fabric crumpled up that I ironed with the normal thing. You still can see some creases on both of them. And seriously, I'm very impressed as this tiny little thing here can get so hot to uncrumple fabric. It's cool, it's really, really cool. This is actually what I was expecting from the Clover mini iron. I don't know what I was thinking when I bought it as I saw it. This it looks so much like a wood burner. Maybe it will get as hot as a wood burner and will help me save some seams. But it was not the case and I was pretty disappointed. A lot of people came in defense of the Clover Mini Iron. I will give it a go again when I'm not so angry at it anymore. But I think that this tiny thing here is very impressive. I, I'm very impressed. The only thing that annoys me a little bit is that it doesn't have an on and off button and it doesn't seem to shut down after a while while not using Using it, the I big left. one will automatically shut down after three minutes of idle time, and this one here was on the whole so time. don't forget it. On. I think this for me would be more travel kind of thing, not for the sewing room because I do forget the iron on, and I need a safety off switch that the big one has. Maybe if I write it in my forehead, is it a keep or a yeet? For me, it's a keep with safety reservation. I'm a klutz and I forget a lot of things. Oh, it's still steaming. I'm steam. I'm steam. Keep. The next one is not so much of a gadget, but an evolution of an existing thing. Buttons. Magnetic buttons. That are supposed to be invisible. Two magnets inside of a plastic casing that will snap together once in contact. The magnets seem to be very strong, but will it actually work on a jacket or a blouse? Let's sew them in place and see what will happen. Jacket closure. Oh, it, it sticks to the <laughs> sewing machine. Of course it does. It's a magnet. Pretend this is the fashion fabric and this is the Line and it would snap like so. I think I'll install this on a shirt and test it out until the end of the video. Steve's shirt. I'll make it snug. I want it to work a little. Very snug. And now... <laughs> and now... And now there's nothing to test because this thing doesn't work. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. If you put this on a blazer or a sweater, something that will not have to work too much on arm movement, a neck clasp, oh, just a delicate thing, it will work. I don't think this is meant to be for normal clothing. The idea is pretty insane. An invisible button like this that is easy and not a terror to sew. What are you doing? What is happening? <gasps> just because it's your birthday, just because it's your birthday, it doesn't mean that you should be outside. It's not poop, thank God. It works not, it's Invisible magnetic buttons. I can see it. I can see it. Yeah, it's not. I want the joke. I want the joke. I want the... Eat. Fabric. 
Fancy Needle Threader. Also from Clover. Quick threading with desk needle threader. Purple. Works with a variety of sewing and quilting needles from fine to thick size. It only works with Clover needles. Here are the types of needles it goes with. Not such a tiny thing. Not a big thing. But the exact thing. Do I have a needle like that? All of my needles are the big type. That means I cannot use them with this threader. I mean, seriously? You make a threader only for your type of needle? Sequasa. Mm. I'm going to try with this one. It goes in. It's already something. <gasps> the instructions are here. <laughs> Insert the needle eye into needle hole. Then lay thread across center of threader and hold gently. Press lever once and pull needle. This once. Oh, it works. I was getting angry because I thought this cannot only work with one type of needle. Cut the thread on the blade. It has a thread cutter as well. Oh, how cute. Okay, I like this. I do like this. <laughs> yes, you're getting old. You cannot see the holes anymore. And it takes forever for you to be able thread to thread a needle. I think this will definitely help you. You need to be able to see the hole of the needle and make sure it's on the right position. Otherwise, it will not catch. Seeing the eye of the needle inside of this thingy is complicated. <laughs> Why is it not working anymore? I was happy way too soon. It doesn't work anymore. This is a needle threader. I can't see what's going on. Zweimal hat das funktioniert und jetzt funktioniert das nicht mehr. Was soll der Scheiß? Yet? Let's do this again. I'm not giving up. I was happy. I was. I was. I was happy. And then he deceived me. Let's see a very thick needle. Oh, it, it went in. I'll try again with my thin millinery needle. I think if you hold the needle, it's better than holding the thread. Yeah. If I hold the needle, the 98% success rate. But the thing tells you to hold the thread. Again, with the thicker needle, it goes well. You have to hold the needle <laughs> and not so much the thread as they say in the instructions. Then the thing works. It's a cute doohickey. I'll definitely use this. So it's a keep for me. What do you think? Are you in that age already? I'm not. But I'm getting there, I think. I'm scared. I'm very scared. But just to have this and not straining my eyes for minutes to try to put needles through. Mm -hmm. It works, I like it, I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it! Another clover gadget. A lot of clover gadgets today. The clip and glide. A bot kit. The clip provides firm hold on elastic end. Suitable for elastic with 15 millimeters or wider. Width of casing opening 20 millimeters or wider. Exceptional flexibility ensures smooth passage along curvy areas. It's very flexible. Open the clip and then you clip the elastic or whatever it is you're trying to put through a channel and it will supposedly hold it in place. Allegedly. Like you heard he stretch, right? You what? An ostrich. Allegedly. But sometimes I don't use elastic for gathering on blouses and such. I use a strip of fabric and this is not holding the strip of fabric that well. I would lose this inside the channel for sure. Let's try this. It's intended use. Elastic. Insert the elastic and close the clippy thing. Oh, it holds. Yeah. No gambiajas with this one. It works only with elastics and elastics only. It has a very tight grip and you will not lose it inside the channel. You can see here the teeth went right in the grooves of the elastic band. That's why it sticks so well and not so much to the fabric because it has nowhere to go. I think it will be a problem. This thing is quite thick. So if you have that's a little bit on the thinner size, it might not go through. For example, this one. I sold by eye. I have no idea how wide it is. It's my muscle memory channel width. <laughs> Talk about a good idea and a very bad execution. Come on. I refuse to go so wide for a channel just so this could go through it if i have a normal bodkin and it goes through perfectly without issues don't come at me but this for me is a yeet i hate it The next one is the Loshing Round Lock Sewing Foot. The blade is attached very close to the presser foot where the sewing is made. It's supposed to replace the serger. Very compact design, sharp cutting. You can cut any material. It passed quality control. Woohoo. Just came back from surgery. This is so weird. I really don't feel anything. I feel nothing. Boy, this is so weird. Ugh. I have a lazy hand. I cannot move it. <laughs>
It's such a weird feeling. I, I'm ooh ooh. I, I don't like this. I really don't like this. I don't like this. What do you have to say? Zero out of ten. Do not recommend. <laughs> And my hand still very numb and I can't really move anything. But look, I'm bleeding. I, I forgot about it and I used my arm and I just hope I didn't rip any stitches but I can see a little bit of blood coming Ooh, through. I'm scared. It does look like a serger when you look at it from the top. This is the blade of the thingy. It moves. Let's put this on the machine and see how that will go. Curious. Look at this amazing thing. Put it here and it is attached. You can see everything moving because of this thingy here on the needle bar that will lift and put the blade down. This is such a weird angle. Why is it so weird? Why is the color weird? What is happening? I seriously need to stop using this arm. Instructions. How to use. Set stitch width of your machine at the maximum five millimeters um i can't close zigzag width five millimeters this machine is stupid this is the simplest machine i got and you can see here the width of five does not allow me a length of four let me see if four would be okay or if it will catch i don't know i think it's going to work let's see <laughs> Cotton poplin. The zigzag will work fine. It's just a matter now of putting the fabric in the right place for it to cut it off. Oh, this cannot be used for a toy sewing machine. Ooh. Not that I was planning to, anyways. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's cutting, it's cutting. But I have no thread. <laughs> Damn it! Oh, I can't thread my machine because my hand is not working. Oh, so, something's happening. <sighs> Oh my god! It works! Look at that! It's perfectly cut! This machine doesn't have an overlock stitch, so it might still fray a little bit here on the top. But maybe if I do the stitches closer together, then it will work. And the thing about the speed, it's not the foot, it's my machine. Look at those stitches! And look at this cutting! It, it's perfect! I really didn't expect this to work so well! This is definitely a keep for me! Seriously, this is so insanely good! It's so good, it's insane. But since I already own a serger, I will be giving this foot away to one of our lovely bacon. So if you're interested, let me know in the comments and I will pick one random winner to send you this piece of equipment for free. Oh, you think if you have a machine with other types of stitches, then it might even work better than just a normal zigzag. Wow, I, I'm speechless. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it. Next one is another clover gadget. It is a stitch guide. Perfect to stitch straight or in a curve and top stitching. Oh, this is so cute. Open plastic. Inside another plastic. It's the weirdest packaging ever. Two guides. Ugh. Two plastic guides. Mirror. And one tiny little curvy thing for you to sew on top. Give me a piece of paper or something white. So it has here different holes. I wonder if this is for you to be able to stitch over the guide. Instruction! Before using, peel the film from the bottom of the guide. <laughs> Insert the needle into template hole. Attach the guide along. Remove the template. Oh. So this is just a template for for measurement. Which is pretty interesting. It's really cool. But you're not supposed to sew with this on the machine. Makes sense. I think it would be covering the feet dogs. It's very sticky and it seems to be reusable. Don't know if you ever heard of Sticky Buddy. Use it to groom them or even yourself. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Wow! <laughs> It, it has the same like sticky silicone feeling to this. You can just take it off, wash it and use it over and over again and it will not lose its stickiness. I don't know. I lost one plastic thingy already. So let's use the guide. To the machine. Coke Zero, anyone? Oh, it's so weird that my hand does not work and I'm scared about this <sighs> blood thing. But this is my machine and this is my guide. It's just like a piece of tape that I glued over here. It's like those white bar tapes and it's already coming a off. One and a half centimeter seam allowance. That is already what I have here on the guide. And now we can put the thing here. Just, oh, it sticks forever. If you want to sew on a straight line, you're supposed to put them together like this. They attach to each other. This is the most ridiculous nitpicking you will ever see coming from me. It's not really flush with the machine. The fabric is going underneath the guy. If I were to sew this, it would not be a straight line anymore. So this is kind of annoying. But let's continue. 
it's really stuck there. If you want to sew a curve, use the small side of the guide. This is nice. This definitely helps with curves. For some top stitching, place the guide in front of the presser foot and sew. Mm -hmm. That's very straight. Kind of dancing around. My needle plate is not flush with the machine. You can see here there's a bevel. I'm quite impressed. Stitching strips, a spaghetti strap or something that will require guidance. I'm just holding it like this. I'm not guiding anywhere and it's doing its thing. This is cool. This is cool. I do have a magnetic guide though for this machine and I barely use it. I don't know if I gonna use this because I feel this is just yet another unnecessary piece of plastic going around. I will lose this for sure. It makes more sense maybe if you are a beginner and can't control your seams that well yet. Would you use something like this? Let me know and I'm going to send it to you because I don't need it. It's an interesting idea though. I will let you decide. <laughs> Next one is a mini darning loom to fix things that cannot be mended on the machine. Like socks. Uh, I need the instructions. Where did I put the instructions? <laughs> this will be fun with my stupid hand. Thank you for your purchase. Directions for you. Okay, wait, wait, wait. So you have this thing. Round piece of wood with a groove in the middle. Groovy baby. Fit it onto the thing you want to fix. This almost hole on the sock. Insert this thing. In the groove fixated with a rubber band how though it is fixated and now you have this thing is here i got the cheapest one and the most generic one that amazon threw at me and mine came with this weird crocheting hook a few rubber bands strong ones and a very big needle a huge needle over until the hook is covered <laughs> Dash, now some needle completing less row of thread. What are you trying to tell me? Okay. Okay. Embroidery thread. I only have red. Thread this giant needle. And zigzag all around. Ah! No! Damn it! Oh god. Everything is crooked now. <laughs> no! Okay, it's it's and now it's just we <laughs> just pull the thread through, turn the thingies, and go to the other side. I think this is the way it's done. I have no idea. For mini weaving. I can't seem to make it go down. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Ugliest weaving I've ever done in my life. Uh, just watch me struggle. Do I have to wear this sock again? You better. You better. Here I am slaving away. So you have a nice sock. And then you ask that question. The audacity. I can't do this anymore. Oh, it's so weird using my right hand. Just remove it from then. Hope for the best. Oh, oh, oh. <gasps> Ooh, it's happening. It's happening. Wow. <laughs> it's so ugly. <laughs> okay, it's fixated. Look at this. It's so ugly. <laughs> why are these so good and why are these so apart? It is one eternity later. So this is the first try. I couldn't get these to be next to each other somehow. This is the second try with a double thread. It worked better, but it's still very wonky and ugly. And this is the third and final try. And look how much progress aside from these stitches here. <laughs> but this sock is officially mended and it looks very ugly. I didn't see this only on Amazon. I saw this on Instagram and kept being recommended to me a lot. So I had to get one to test it out. I have to say, I really, really like it. I had fun doing this. It's relaxing. And I don't find making things with my hands very relaxing because my hands shake so much. This one was fun. It's a definite keep for me. Yes. With which ones will you keep? Which ones will you eat? Yeet! Yeet! <laughs> Maybe set them on fire. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these shenanigans, then check the one down below because I think you're going to like it. Ta ta!